So one person approached one uh, HR manager and asked him for a job. The HR manager was very kind and then he said, okay, send me a mail. And then he gave him, he gave him his mail ID. So that person, uh, you know, the next day he sent a mail. So what did he do? You know, he, he wrote that mail ID on the two field and then he attached his resume and then he simply sent it. What is the chance of his mail or his resume getting read? Almost zero. In fact, the manager even, even didn't open that mail. Why? Because that mail didn't have the sender's name. The mail didn't have uh, the subject field filled up. The mail didn't have any greetings. The mail didn't have any opening sentence. The mail didn't have any body. The mail didn't have any conclusion. The mail, mail didn't have any close. It had only a resume attached. So this is not the way to send your resume to a hiring manager. What you must do? So you must follow the structure. There is a structure to be followed in email. What is that structure? So any email will have the subject. So there are six important, uh, you know, uh, elements of any email. The first one is the subject. The second one is the greetings. Or you can call it salutation. The third one is the opening sentence. The fourth one is the body or the message. The fifth one is the conclusion. The last one is the close. So this is the email structure. So when you send a job application email, you must ensure that all these six uh, you know, elements are there in your email. What is the first one? Subject. So the subject uh, you know, tells about what the mail is about in a very precise way in say three or four words, the job application for maintenance engineer, something like that. So a subject tells the reader what the mail is about. You know, it's, it is the summation, it's a summary of the mail, the main idea of the mail. And then greetings. So in a letter, what you do in an ordinary letter, you greet that person, respected sir. So if you want to write a letter to your principal of your college, you may start like this, respected sir. So the respected sir is the greetings, salutation. So in email, so we use, we normally don't use respected sir. So we use dear sir, hyphen madam. There is one way of you know, write the greetings. If you don't know who the person is, it could be a man or a woman. The hiring manager could be a man or a woman. So you may write, dear, sir, hyphen, madam. Or you may write, dear, Mr. Simon. So this is another way of writing the greetings. And then if you know that the person, you may write, hi, Sankar, hi Sankar, hello. If you know that person, so the greetings depend on how much you know that person. 
So if you don't know the person, so you may use dear Mr. Simon, dear Miss Anita, something like that. So the greetings must be there, salutation. So it depends on who, whom you are writing to. If you know the person, and if you your colleague, you can use very informal way, you can use the greetings. Hi, hello, like that. Then comes the opening sentence. The opening, the opening sentence tells the reader why you are writing that uh, mail. <clears throat> I am writing with reference to the advertisement for the post of, say, accounts manager. So why you are writing? What is the need for you to write that mail? I am writing the reason. So you tell the reason for writing. I am writing to confirm the order. I am writing to request you to send me this information. Something like that. So the opening sentence of that mail. And then comes the body of the message. So in the body of the message, you tell what you want to tell. Say, I am a mechanical engineer. I have got 10 years of experience in manufacturing industry. I am hardworking, enthusiastic, team, team man, something like that. And I request you to consider me for the post of the mechanical engineer in your esteemed organization. So all these are called body of the message. So you, what do you want to tell? So you include that in the body of the message. Then comes the conclusion. So in the conclusion part, you know, you, you want uh, that reader, that recipient to act on your request. So what is the, the response? You want the recipient to respond to your mail. So you want him to respond. How do you say that? So I would be glad, I would be glad if I am given an opportunity to meet you in a personal interview. So what is the purpose of sending a mail, job application mail? You must be granted an interview. That is the sole aim of job application email. You must somehow get an get a call letter for interview. You must somehow convince the person to grant you an interview. So that must be included in the conclusion section of the email. Oh, okay. So someone wants me to repeat uh, that opening sentence. Uh, see, so how do you, you know, open a letter? How do you start writing a letter? So you tell uh, why you are writing that letter. So that is the opening sentence. So normally, in most of the cases, the opening sentence will start like this. I am writing. So why, uh, why I am writing this email must be clearly told in the first sentence, whatever the mail may be. It could be a job application mail. It could be a mail to request something. It could be, it could be a mail to complain about something, whatever it is. I am writing to complain about the poor service of your product which I received last month. The service was very bad. So he was he is complaining. I am writing to complain. I am writing to confirm. I am writing to request. I am writing to apply. So I am writing to apply for the job of accounts manager in your company. So that's the opening sentence. So mostly it starts with, I am writing. So in conclusion, uh, you want that uh, recipient to respond to your request. 
So you have to write that. So in a job application email, you want uh, the, uh, the recruiting manager to call you for an interview. That is the sole aim of the job application email. So you straight away ask for it. I would be glad, I would be happy if you call me for an interview. So you can write that in the conclusion part of that mail. Then finally close. So how do you close uh, your normal letter? So respected uh, principal, respected sir. Finally, how do you close? Yours sincerely, yours faithfully. But in email, we normally don't use uh, your sincerely and yours faithfully. Instead, we use regards, kind regards, thanks and regards, bye. So if it is a very informal mail, you're writing to your close friend, you say bye. So if it is a HR manager, you say regards, something like that. So that is how you close the mail and then you write your name. You, you may also give your phone number. Okay, that is how uh, the email is structured. So whenever you write a, a job application mail, you must remember all these six elements. There must be a subject. There must be greetings. There must be opening sentence, which introduces the recipient to the you know, content of the mail. And then the body of the message, body or the message, conclusion and close. Now, uh, we will write a very simple, uh, normal, you know, ordinary job application email using all these elements. So what is the subject? I write job application. For, say, shop floor supervisor. So this is the subject line, subject. So you, you saw this, uh, you know, uh, advertisement in the newspaper. So you do not know, they, are, they have given the mail ID, but they have not given the name of the HR manager or recruiting manager. So you don't know his name. So you write, how do you greet him? Dear, and you do not know whether he is a man or a woman. So to be on the safe side, you say dear sir or madam. Okay, so this is the subject line, greetings. And then comes the first line. So the first line in general starts like this. I am writing. to apply for the post of shop floor supervisor. So this is the first sentence of the mail. I am writing to apply for the post of shop floor supervisor. So then in the body of the message, what you have to write, you have to tell about yourself. So suppose if you are a mechanical engineer, you say, I am a mechanical engineer. And then I passed out from, you name your college. And then if you have experience, you may say, I have you know, 12 years of experience in the shop floor activities. And then uh, you tell the, name of the company which you worked for before. So all that you say in the body of that uh, message. And then conclusion. 
Okay. So subject, salutation, first sentence, body. Think so here comes the body of the message. And then uh, uh, conclusion. So you want you want uh, the recipient to respond to your mail. So how do you ask for it? So you ask like this. I would be glad. If I am given an opportunity to meet you in an interview. So please grant me an interview. So that is the sole objective of writing a job application email. So I want an interview. I want the manager to be convinced and call me for an interview. So I ask for it upright. I would be glad if I'm given an opportunity to meet you in an interview. Or please call me for an interview. And then you close regards. And then you write your name, Raj or Roger Kumar. Now, this is a simple mail. It has all the six elements, right? Now, this will not get you a job. Why? Because this simple email does not stand out from the crowd. You know, everybody writes a mail like this. If you want to get noticed by the hiring manager, your email should be different from others. How do you make it more, you know, powerful, you know, so that the hiring manager notice it and call you for an interview. So that is the point we are going to discuss now. So one by one, we will come to that. The subject, See the subject, it is written job application for soft flow supervisor. So they suggest you write your name here. So Raja Kumar dash. So what does it mean? Actually, Raja Kumar is, uh, you know, applying for the post of shop floor supervisor. So the subject line, as soon as the hiring manager sees, looks into that sub subject line, uh, one more information he gets. So someone by name Raja Kumar is asking for the job. And then the next line is dear sir or madam. So it is not personal. So when you, when you, you know, write uh, dear sir or madam in the salutation uh, field, it is not personal. It is too generic. So before, uh, you know, writing that mail, you need to do some homework. You know, you need to get the name of that hiring manager of that particular company. There are many ways to do that. You can go to the LinkedIn page of that company. You can go to their website. You can contact uh, someone uh, who is working for that company. And then if you, if you succeed in getting the name of that hiring manager of that particular company, it is very good. So you get that uh, name and then write his name here. Dear, so you may use dear Mr. Charles. Uh, 
And then when you write his name, you must be doubly careful to spell it correctly. So Charles, the spelling is C-H-A-R-L-E-S. If you make a mistake or if you misspell the name, there is 99 percentage of 99 percentage of the time you won't get a call letter. So spell it correctly. Dear Mr. Charles, I am writing to apply for the post of shop floor supervisor. So you can add that company name in your company XYZ. So this is the first sentence. And in the second sentence, you know, you need to hook that uh, recipient or reader. So what is a hook? What is a hook? See, uh, the manager has uh, opened your mail. He, he has seen that uh, uh, you know, he was uh, browsing through the subject uh, field of um, all the mails which he has received. The typical manager, uh, uh, HR manager receives hundreds of mails per day. So most of the time he spends uh, his time with the computer browsing the mails. So he quickly sees all the subject columns and then he decides to open it. He decides to open this mail. And then he sees this, he, he, he reads this. And then normally he might read one or two sentences of that covering letter and then uh, he will close that mail. You, we should not allow that to happen. We need to hook the recipient with the first few sentences. First sentence you have already written. What should be the second or third sentences? So the second or third sentences should hook the attention of the recipient. That is the HR manager. How do you get his attention? So it's a very important question. You know, if you normally write like this, see, I am writing to apply for this is okay. The second sentence, if you start telling about yourself, it is how a lot of people do that. There is nothing new in that. There is nothing to grab the attention of the recipient of the mail. So you need to hook the recipient attention. You need to hook him. How do you do that? You know, everybody is interested in themselves. See, they will ask, what is in it for me? So when the manager reads the mail, you must somehow get his attention. You must make, convince him that, is, that there is something in it for him. So how do you do that? So this is where the your research comes. As I told you before, you should have done a lot of research about the company to which you are applying for. Say, for example, let us say the company is uh, uh, automobile brake manufacturing company. Okay. So how do you hook their interest? Supposing it's a you no know, Let us say it's a brakes India. Uh, it is uh, one of the TVS companies. So how do you hook the interest? How, how do you hook the recipient attention? Say, let us say your grandfather worked for a TVS company. So you may start like this. See, you may say, my grandfather worked for Wheels India, and he has talked about the TVS culture of quality, on-time delivery, and respect for people. See, you are not talking about yourself. You are talking about the company. 
mm-hmm. which is one of the group companies of a you know a tvs group so you are talking about uh, the tvs group of companies so uh, as the manager reads it uh, he gets interested so what you are telling him you are telling him a story about your grandfather worked for one of the group companies of tvs so this is how you get the attention and then you proceed further so the grandfather has talked about tvs culture of quality on time delivery and respect for people and so he imbibed a strong desire to join a tvs company so my grandfather worked for tvs for a tvs company so he was always talking about quality the the culture of tvs quality on time delivery and respect for people so unknowingly he imbibed all this into me so i grew up wanting to join a tvs company that is why i am applying for this job so this is how you get the attention of the you know hiring manager so you should have or you can another way of uh, there are many ways by which you can um, hook the recipient of the of your mail so another way is uh, you know you talk about uh, you know you, you, as i said you if you had done your research correctly you would have come to know more most of the things about the company so breaks india is a 3000 crores company so uh, right from my college days i wanted to join uh, multi multi thousand companies like breaks india so i referred your website and found out that uh, your turnover for the last uh, in the financial year was 3200 crores so that is one of the reasons i want to join your company something like that so instead of uh, writing a mail like any others do so what do you do you you know you want to stand out from the crowd you want to increase your ch- chances of getting that coveted call letter for interview somehow you must get the attention of the uh, recruiting manager somehow your mail must get noticed somehow you must get convinced okay that's one point and then ask you write about your uh, qualification and experience let us say you have uh, some years of experience so instead of just telling so i have 10 years of experience in x y in a b c company so instead of telling simply you know the years of experience what you have to do what you have to tell is what you you know acquired by working for 10 years in that abc company that is what uh, interest people see while i was working for that abc company i you know they they tell you so you you should not tell you must show show not tell so what does it mean you must you know you you may tell so i am a team player i am uh, innovative creative i am a go getter i am very punctual so please consider me for for that job that is one way of telling that but nobody will get convinced so everybody is telling that but how do you uh, you know convince him you don't tell you show how do you show that uh, you have all these qualities you tell him like this now how do you tell him that you are a team player so you might tell him tell like this say in my in the last company which i worked i along with a few others worked on a project 
and we, we reduced the cycle time from 90 minutes to 60 minutes so what does it tell it it shows that you are a team player so you worked with other three members of your team and together you have reduced the cycle time and then you can say this uh, see i have uh, participated in the suggestion scheme of my previous company and then i gave 120 suggestions for the year 2019 and 20 and then out of the 120 suggestions i won cash awards for 12 suggestions so what does it show it shows that you are creative so this, don't simply say i am creative you need to convince the you know, hiring manager that you are creative you don't need to tell him you have to show him that you are creative you have to give him some concrete evidences and then he may say this so every year in my company i have got the you know 100% uh, attendance award. I have got 100% attendance award for the last two years. So what does it uh, show? It shows that you are very punctual. You are very sincere. So this is how we must write. So what is, what is that you remember? Show, not tell. And then when coming to this conclusion part. So you give a lot of uh, concrete evidences and then you come to the con conclusion part. What do you, how do you conclude? So as I said earlier, uh, you need to, uh, they call it a big ask, big ask. You need to, you know, the big ask, what is that you desire? That is big ask. You need to tell him clearly. So what is that you want? You want uh, the hiring manager to call you for an interview. How do you make it more powerful? I would be glad if I'm given an opportunity to meet you in an interview and prove myself. You can uh, add that if you want. So the point is you must make it uh, powerful. See, words are very powerful. Right words are like golden apples placed on a silver plate. This is a proverb of King Solomon who ruled the present day Israel 2,500 years before. Right words are very important. So in email also, we need to choose the right words. Words are powerful. Words make others to act. So in email application, so you have an objective. That objective has to be clearly spelt. So you need to convince the other person. You need to convince the hiring manager to somehow call you for an interview. You ask for it uh, upright. Don't hesitate. You ask for it. So ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. So we need to ask. So that, that is the last uh, part of that mail conclusion. You need to ask for an interview. See? I'd be glad if I'm given an opportunity to meet you in an interview to prove, my, to prove myself. Before we wind up this, this mail, there are other tips I want to give you. Grammar and punctuation. See, you need to be very careful. So, you, you know, in an interview, they won't bother all these things. So, if you make some grammar mistakes, uh, the manager will not bother. Because everybody makes mistakes while talking. But writing, many people will not tolerate mistakes. Why? So, we have enough time. So before uh, hitting the send button, you have enough time. So 
you need to check before hitting that send button you need to review your mail for the tone how the how is the tone so what should be the tone the tone needs to be assertive you know conversational polite okay that should be the tone of your email and then you know the structure should be very important you should not uh, leave anything blank you should not leave the subject column blank say greetings so uh, the structure is important everything must be filled so see that everything is done correctly and then comes grammar let's see whether you have done any grammar mistakes so you may request your friend to go through the mail for any grammar mistakes punctuation all that is very important so regards so there should be a comma here so all punctuations must be taken care of you there must be a full stop here so all that is important in email and then another point so when writing emails you must use as far as possible active voice so what is active what is the difference between active and pass passive voice so i worked i worked for abc company for 10 years the abc company had recruited me as maintenance engineer for 10 years so that's a different i work for is a, an active voice so as far as possible we need to use active voice in mails and then positive words what are positive words glad is a positive word opportunity is a positive word so as far as possible use positive words in your mail and then be purposeful so what is being purposeful use less words you know the as i told you before nobody has got time in this world particularly the hr managers you know they receive hundreds of emails every day you know at the maximum they will they can spend only few seconds reading your mail so if you write uh, you know more elaborately if you are repeating what you have said already you know they they will stop reading your mail and then close your mail so if you want your mail to be read fully you need to be short you need to use less words so you have to go through your mail again and then ruthlessly cut off those words which are not needed ruthlessly cut off the sentences which repeat the same thing again so this is how you need to be direct and be brief you need to be brief you need to be purposeful okay now i ask you one question the question is do you apply if the company has not asked for it do you apply if the company has not asked for it see there is no advertisement in the newspaper there is no advertisement in the you know media social media they have not called for the job opening but still do you apply for it or not the answer is yes do you apply means you have to apply see the reason is you know big companies are always in hiring mode that means what they are continuously recruiting people and again 
you know they don't get good people always they search for good people they don't get it see i was a hr manager at breaks india for few years and then we advertise for an uh, hr executive uh, position for three times in the newspaper but we didn't get it we, we didn't get suitable person so we, we would be very happy if someone would have applied for that position voluntarily you know so uh, as i said in the beginning most of the companies they don't get suitable people even after spending lot of money on advertisement so if you consider fit for a particular position you must apply whether the companies advertise or not you must apply you have an advantage when you apply without asking for so what is the advantage you have supposing the company advertise for a position a lot of people will apply for it they don't apply but they need to fill that particular vacancy but they have not advertised they advertised conducted interview they didn't get a suitable person the post is still vacant but you apply so very few people will only apply suppose if 90 people would have applied means without uh, the company asking for that particular position only few people would have applied so your chances of getting a call letter for interview will be much higher when you apply for a position which is not called for okay now before i wind up uh, i want to you know discuss two or three emails how do you write uh, such mails supposing you are a fresher you don't have any experience so how do you apply how do you convince uh, the recruiting manager that you are suitable for that position so if you so know, normally companies recruit freshers for trainee positions trainee supervisor trainee engineer trainee operators like that so how do you convince how do you convince the a uh, recruiting manager that you are suitable let us say there is one position for diploma trainee let us say that you are a diploma holder so how do you convince uh, the hr manager see you don't have experience but how do you convince uh, the people at the company so one thing they normally the hiring managers when they interact with uh, freshers the one thing they want to know is the project which uh, the you know applicant uh, has done while he was in college so you must uh, you know if you have done a good project you know you must uh, be ready you know and then uh, be ready to face questions and then while writing that uh, email Now you have to highlight your project. You know something must interest the HR manager. So some many cases in manufacturing industry, the HR manager will be a technical person. So as you say something about your project, he naturally he will naturally get interested. So this is one way of you now hook the uh, recipient of your mail. So tell something about your project up front to tell about your qualification and then you start talking about your project <clears throat> and then as i said before uh, you know all companies uh, want uh, the you know employees to be confident in their abilities and then uh, they have some right values attitudes so many companies you know they they hire employees for attitudes and then they train them for skills so attitude is more important 
So as a fresher, you must prove that you have the right positive attitude. So you must uh, ensure that uh, uh, you have some good attitude which the companies are looking for. You know, team player is one of the good attitude. Uh, you know, they will be wanting to, wanting the, the, the employees to have. So such attitudes, you, know, you must uh, think of and then you must include in your resume and in your cover letter. So the next example is you have some experience. So you have some experience uh, after graduation. So how do you write a covering letter? How do you write your email? So since you have experience, so you need to focus on the experience which you had at that particular industry. And then you must tell the activities which you did at that particular in industry. So you must have uh, you must have been involved in some projects. So you must uh, tell that project. You must have involved in some case and activities. You must tell them the case and activities. So you must have involved in other activities and would have learned something. So you must uh, uh, show them that activities which have involved. So then you must uh, see that uh, you must see that they are convinced that you are fit for that particular position. Okay, finally, before I wind up, uh, I want to tell you one thing. That is, you need to build your personal brand. So many of you are listening to me now or searching for jobs. So what you need to do is, you need to build your personal brand. So what is personal brand? Personal brand is the impression of who you are. There are three things in personal brand. So build your, develop. There are three things in the personal brand. Who you are. And then what are you capable? What you are capable of. And the third thing is what makes you valuable? So what is your personal brand? It is the impression about yourself, you have about yourself. So if you know who you are, if you are confident, are you confident about yourself? Companies are willing to hire people who are confident about themselves. You need to exhibit that you are confident. That is to be shown in your job application mail. You need not have experience. If you have confidence, the companies want to hire people who are confident in themselves. What you are capable of. So you must have studied uh, you know, you know, so many for so many years. And then even if you do not have experience, you would have been capable of doing something. You would have been capable of solving simple problems. You would have been capable of working with other members. You are capable of understanding something fast. So what you are capable of? So you need to exhibit that in your job application mail. And then what makes you valuable? What are the things value to you? What are your values? See, are you, you know, value punctuality? Or you value dependability? 
are you truthful or these are all your values your values must be exhibited in your mail job application mail so you need to build your personal brand so you need to be confident about yourself you need to have confidence about your abilities you need to be happy about the things which you value most then all these will exhibit in your mail in your conversation and all these will also be exhibited when you call for an interview and the managers will want to hire you know people like you what you need to do is to build yourself develop yourself build your personal brand so thank you very much for listening to me thank you very much